In this example, we're going to work out the exact value for the tangent of 7.5 degrees. And so we're going to employ a few different trigonometric identities here to kind of facilitate the process. Initially, we're going to look at using this half angle identity for tangent. And of course, for this one, we have a couple of choices. So I went ahead with 1 minus cosine x divided by the sine of x. So let's go ahead and use this first. So we need some angle x that when we cut it in half, we get 7.5 degrees. Well, that's nice because 7.5 times 2 is, well, 15 degrees. So we can say that the tangent then of 15 degrees divided by 2 will equal this half angle identity. So 1 minus the cosine of 15 degrees all divided by the sine of 15 degrees. Well, the sine and cosine of 15 degrees are not values that uh, are readily known. You probably don't have that right off the top of your head. So let's go ahead and use these difference identities here for sine and cosine to go ahead and get those values so we can plug them in. So let's go ahead and do the cosine first. So cosine of 15 degrees. Well, we need two angles that when we subtract them, they make 15 degrees. But also, these two angles that we choose, we need to know their sine and cosine. So it looks like we could easily use 45 degrees and then subtract 30 degrees from that. All right, so here is that expansion. We'll say the cosine of 45 degrees times the cosine of 30 degrees. And we'll add to that the sine of 45 degrees times the sine of 30 degrees. And these values we know, so let's go ahead and plug them in. Cosine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2. And the cosine of 30, square root of 3 over 2. And to that product, we'll add, well, the square root of 2 over 2 times a half. So it looks like when we put this all together, it'll be the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 all over 4. And that will be our cosine of 15 degrees. So we'll kind of put a couple underlines under that. That's important. We all need him. So we'll come back to him in a second. Let's go ahead and do the sine of 15 degrees as well. And it looks as though taking the same approach uh, will be just fine. So it'll be the sine of two angles that subtract to make 15. And we'll go ahead and use 45 and 30 because we know the sine and cosine for 45 and 30 degrees. So this expansion using this difference identity here is going to be the sine of 45 degrees times the cosine of 30 degrees minus the sine of 30 degrees times the cosine of 45 degrees. And these values, okay, square root of 2 over 2 times the square root of 3 over 2. And from that product, we'll subtract, it looks like, 1 half times the square root of 2 over 2. So this ends up being the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 all over 4. And that will be the sine of 15 degrees. Okay, so he's important as well. Okay, so putting all this together, we had 1 minus the cosine of 15 divided by the sine of 15. So let's plug all this stuff in. So 1 minus the cosine of 15. So that'll be the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 all over 4. And I have that written down here. And that's going to be divided by the sine of 15 degrees, which is this guy right there. So the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 all over 4. Okay, we have quite a complex fraction here. So let's go ahead and get to work at simplifying this. I'm going to go ahead and look at the numerator first, and it seems like we can get common denominators. So we'll change just 1 into a 4 over 4. So it'll be a 4, and then we'll distribute the minus. So 4 minus the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2, all over that common denominator of 4, all over, well, the denominator that we have already. Okay, so with complex fractions, let's go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal. So 4 over the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2. And that's nice because those 4's will cancel. So what it looks like we have right now is 4 minus the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 all over the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2. Let's go ahead and rationalize this denominator by multiplying the top and bottom of this fraction by the conjugate. So we'll just change the sign in the middle. 
So we'll say the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2. And we'll get parentheses around everything so we don't make mistakes here. Okay, lots of terms. So we'll distribute the 4 through first. So 4 radical 6 plus 4 radical 2. And then we'll distribute the negative square root of 6. So we'll have minus 6 minus 2 radical 3 when we simplify it. And then let's bring the negative radical 2. So minus 2 radical 3 and then minus 2. And all of that is over, well, 6 minus 2, which is 4. Okay, so that's what we have right now. It seems like we can do a little simplification in our numerator. So we'll have 4 radical 6. That's this term. And let's go ahead and put the plus 4 radical 2. That's that guy. We've got a couple of radical 3s, so minus 4 radical 3, and then minus 8. And all of that is over 4. Well, that's pretty pleasant because it seems like all of these numbers are multiples of 4. So let's go ahead and just factor out that 4 and cancel. So we have the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 minus the square root of 3 minus 2. So it seems like this value right here, which has these four numbers, three of which are irrational, we're going to add and subtract them, and it seems like this is going to be the tangent of 7.5 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and write that. The tangent of 7.5 degrees equals the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 minus the square root of 3 minus 2. And we'll go ahead and grab a calculator and we'll just ensure that this works. Okay, so here's the calculator. We'll just kind of slide everything up a little bit, make some room. And we'll use a nice inverse tangent here. So it's the inverse tangent of, well, this ex entire expression here. So the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 minus the square root of 3 minus 2. Close that thing off. And 15 over 2, which is indeed 7.5. So we see that we have here the exact value for the tangent of 7.5 degrees. And we got that value by employing a few different trig identities. We started with the half angle identity for tangent, and we also included the difference identities for both sine and cosine as well.